Hi there, welcome to Crossfader, my name is Jamie Hartley. In this video, we're going to dive deep into the Denon DJ Prime 4 and do a complete review on this all-in-one unit. This is a pre-release version, so what you see in this video might slightly differ when the product is actually released. Denon DJ have sent this to us, so thank you very much Denon for sending us um, this unit to have a play on. I've had so much fun this past week getting really stuck into this unit. There is a mix online that we've put together that you can check out the performance of this unit and see it in action. Um, but in this video, we're going to dive deep and check out all of the features. At the end, make sure you stick around because I'm going to give you some of my opinions, my personal opinions on this piece of DJ equipment, where I think it stands in the industry and how I think the industry should be moving forward and the impact this has really made. So let's take a close look at what this unit has to offer. Remember, this is a pre-release version and it's running a beta version of the software inside. So things might change upon release, but it's so exciting. It has worked really well for me. Let's get stuck in. Please remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff to help us keep making more videos just like this one. The Denon DJ Prime 4 is a professional grade four channel all-in-one unit. It works standalone without the need of a laptop. You can prepare and export your music library using the Engine Prime software, as well as export any Serato crates to a USB. You can even plug in a record box ready USB and have access to all the cues, loops, and data you have set. The front of the unit features a quarter and eighth inch headphone output, plus channel switches to move between USB or line input. There is a crossfader contour knob for mixing or scratching, plus fader start switches. The back of the unit has an array of inputs and outputs. It's powered with an AC in and has two USB type A connectors where you can connect an external keyboard if you want, as well as a USB type B for connecting a laptop and using it in controller mode. The ethernet link port can be used to connect to lighting or video DJ software and setups. It has three XLR outputs with a master and booth, as well as the all new zone output. This allows DJs to send either the master or a dedicated playlist to a separate independent output for playing music in a different room. There is also an unbalanced RCA master out, four line inputs for external players with the option to switch between line and phono on channels three and four. Lastly, there are two jack combo mic inputs with independent level controls so they don't take over any of the four channels on the unit. The top of the unit has another two USB slots and an SD card slot for devices and the underside has a 2.5 inch SATA bay for adding a hard drive of music. We will look at this in a future video. The Denon DJ Prime 4 features this nice 10 inch touchscreen. This is definitely one of the standout features of this unit. You can plug in a USB keyboard into the actual unit itself to search for songs. So this basically turns into almost like a mini laptop embedded into the player. It works just like you would use an iPad. So it's got touch gestures like swiping up and down to scroll through your library. When we get onto the waveforms, you can pinch and zoom. So it's things that we're already very comfortable with, with our own devices. Let's have a look at how the browse features work. At the moment, we're in crates. I don't have any crates set up, so we're currently looking at the whole library that's on the USB stick. We can organize this library or any playlists by all these different options. So we've got BPM, artist, rating, all sorts. And you can set up different things like the ratings and the genres and add comments to it all within the Engine Prime software. We can go ascending and descending just with the touch of a button there. Moving down, we've got the playlists feature here. Within playlists, you can access all the pre-planned playlists that you've set up in the Engine Prime software and exported to your USB. You can do them in play order as well as all these other organizational options. Something else to be aware of is that you can actually create your own playlists on the unit itself, pressing this icon here, and then you can create playlists or folders. You can select the tracks that you want to add to those playlists or folders. And that's a nice touch, so you don't even have to go into the Engine Prime software. You can do it just on the unit itself. Moving down again, we've got the prepare folder. So if you're in a playlist and you feel like you want to play a song, but just not yet, you can swipe to the left and it will add it to the prepare folder so you can access it at a later date. You can clear that pre prepare folder here. Next up, we have the folder icon. So this is just all of the folders that you've got on your USB drive. So if you just want to drag and drop some files, some music files onto the USB rather than go through the Engine Prime software, you can play them through here and the unit will actually analyze those files itself and attach the Engine Prime data like the BPM and key, even if you haven't run it through the software. 
Lastly, we have the search feature. So you can search by genre or by artist and scroll up and down. Or you can just hit the search bar and type in a specific track. To load a track, we can just simply swipe to the right and then we can choose a deck to load it into. One, two, three or four. By clicking number one, it will load that into the left hand side. As previously mentioned, you can pinch to zoom in and out of the waveforms, literally two fingers, open and close. So you can zoom in and out of the waveforms nice and easy. We can jump back to library here and see our overview of the library. We can go out of that and see the playlist we're currently in or the search that we're currently in here and scroll up and down. So you've always got the view of the waveforms and of the library, which is a really nice touch. You can quickly navigate to the search and type a new song. If I just go back out of that again, and let's load something else on the opposite side. You just swipe the way that you want to load it. Then if I were to select Dex3 and Dex4 on the actual player, we can simply just swipe and swipe. And then we've got access to all four decks. Apparently in a firmware update, we're going to be able to access horizontal waveforms as well. But currently, this is the beta software that's installed on this and this is a pre-release unit. We've just got the vertical waveforms. A few last things to note on the screen. If you tap the key, which is here, of the currently loaded song, you can actually change the key up and down and this is built within the unit itself. So this is one of the first times we've seen key changing just embedded into an all-in-one unit rather than software based. You can go up in keys and it'll tell you what the next key is going to be if you press the plus icon and go back down. Then you can press done to select that key. The screen is also fully adjustable from the rear. There are lots of grooves that you can change the slant of the screen depending on your viewing angle or you can have it totally flat. Now just be aware it does stick off the back of the unit when it's totally flat. This is one of those things that people maybe worry about is how robust it's going to be, especially if you're traveling with this unit. But hopefully if you are traveling with it, you're going to be using a flight case anyway. So that's just something to bear in mind. If touch screen really isn't your thing, then you still have the tactile buttons here to scroll through your library and through your playlists. You can go forward and backward using these buttons and then load tracks with the load buttons below. The Denon Prime 4 is a four channel all-in-one standalone unit. So all you have to do is plug a USB in or use the internal hard drive to load your songs. And then you can use up to four decks using the four channels in the mixer section. The mixer section has standard up faders and a cross fader like any other DJ unit. It has a three band EQ that you can change from either an isolator EQ to a normal minus 26 dB EQ. It's got trim levels on the top of each channel and also mixer effects here, which are called sweep effects that you can access. There are up to four, which we'll look at very shortly. Each channel has an effects assign at the top, so you can assign either FX1 or FX2. You can assign both at the same time, so you can't layer these effects and these effects, but you can have them turned off or assigned to either one or the other. Let's play some audio and have a listen to how the EQs and the mixer effects sound. The EQs are nice and clean. This is on isolator mode at the moment, so it takes away the total volume of each EQ. We've got the trim level here. And then the sweep effects can be accessed down here, and this is what correlates to these knobs. So the filter. And the filter, you can change the shape of it and the resonance of it within the utilities. We've got an echo. The echo works post fader. Wash, which also works post fader. It's kind of like an echo, but filters it at the same time. And if you go right to the top or the bottom, it pretty much makes a one beat echo out. And that's a half beat echo. The noise creates that build-up effect and you can change the intensity of this within the utility as well.
and they're really nice go-to effects that are inbuilt into the mixer. Each channel has its own cue to preview the channel in your headphones. You can turn the headphone level up here and you've got a headphone mix to master right there and you can split the headphones as well. The headphones go in on the front of the unit. We've got an eighth inch and a quarter inch jack. And then each of these cue buttons lights up to the corresponding deck. So at the moment, this deck is colored purple and that indicates that this cue is associated with deck number one and vice versa. The red cue is associated with deck number two because of the red ring. And you can change these colors to your preference within the settings. The crossfader is replaceable, so you could put an inno fader in or something if you're a scratch DJ. It does work totally fine. There's nothing wrong with this crossfader. It's quite light. There isn't much tension in it. But if you are used to scratching and cutting, it works pretty well. Now, this is a four channel unit, but there are only two players on it. Each player has two layers accessed by the one and three or two and four. So if we were to click three here and then go back to our library and load in another song. So let's load this in and we can choose three. Our library in the middle, we can swipe to the right and it'll load on channel two. Or if we're on deck four, it will load to deck four. So we can toggle between the four decks using these buttons and each has their own color profile that you can adapt and associate to that layer. Each player section on the unit has a whole range of performance features. However, let's just look at those basic features first of all before getting stuck in. We've got a nice tactile cue and play button. We've got a six inch jog wheel that's touch capacitive. So you can touch the top as soon as you touch it. On vinyl mode, it will stop. Vinyl mode turned off. You can nudge the track faster or slower. Even with the vinyl mode on, you can use the edge of the jog wheel to nudge it faster or slower. It's worth mentioning that the jog wheel is very light to touch. So if you were to just nudge it, it will spin quite fast. So if you're a DJ that's used to flicking the jog wheel, you've got to be careful that it doesn't run away. I would, however, recommend always keeping in control of the jog wheel when doing your timing and beat matching exercises. For scratch DJs, it it does feel very responsive. And because it's quite light, you, you don't have to fight the jog wheel in any way. So it definitely feels pretty nice to scratch with, even though it's a slightly smaller jog wheel than the Prime Players, for example. It does feel great. In the center, we have a display. Now you can choose to have your logo displayed here, which you just literally drag and drop onto the main folder of the USB. Or if your logo isn't dragged onto the USB, it will show the album artwork. Now, one little update that I'd like to see, maybe some firmware update or somewhere in the future, is it would be amazing to get the BPM displayed in the center of these jog wheels. The BPM is shown up on the screen here. However, it is quite small. So having it in the center display is an important piece of information that we need would be really beneficial. So that's just a little update that I'd quite like to see. The players also have full size pitch or tempo adjusts with key lock, so with key lock turned off, you can pitch the track up and down as well as speed it up and down. With key lock on, it will lock the key of the track, but still change the speed. You can change the range of the tempo or pitch adjust by holding shift and pressing the pitch bend buttons. And this will change from plus, let's go down to plus and minus 8%. 10%, 20%, 50%, and 100%. So now we get that real big time stretching. With key lock on. And key lock off. Let's just put that back to plus or minus 8%. Now this is a nice feature that I quite like. If the tempo adjust is here, it physically won't let me go back now to plus or minus 8% because that's not within the range of this tempo. So it's gone down to 50. I've got to then find the BPM and get it back within the range before I can change it to that setting. And now we're at plus or minus 8%. So that avoids any slight mishaps if, you're, if you've done a transition and stretched the track really far and want to get back to the original BPM. If you were to just change the range, it doesn't automatically change the BPM with it. You have to make sure you stay in time and catch the BPM and bring it back to center so you can get within that range. So that's I, I really like that feature. It stops any um, quick changes in BPM if you were to change the range. Talking about key lock, 
This button turns it on and off, but if we hold this button, it actually syncs the key of the track. So this is something inbuilt within this all-in-one unit is that it will read the key of the opposite side and actually change the key of the song to match. So this can be done, as mentioned on the screen, by tapping the key and then going up and down with a plus and minus. However, if we've got another track playing on the opposite side, we can hold key sync and it will find the closest key to match. So it's actually changed it to the exact same key. We've got 6A and 6A, and this is minus two semitones. Now, if we have a listen to this song, it's pitched down. If we want to get back to the original pitch, just press key lock. It undoes it and we can put it back on. So that's a really nice feature for mixing in key. Some more useful features on the player sections are the track skip and beat jump. Now, track skip is pretty obvious along players like this. You can scroll through different songs. Beat jump allows you to scroll through the track in phrase. So if you were to choose using this rotator here on the screen, you can choose 16 beats, for example, and then you can beat jump forwards and backwards through the track in that many increments. So even if the track's playing, it will sound pretty seamless. Beat jumping through the song. This pot here actually changes the loop length as well as the beat jump length. So they both read the same value. So if we've got eight beats, for example, we can then click this in and it will set an 8 beat loop. There are also manual loop in and out options and these work with quantize. If we turn quantize off using the touch screen here, you can set the quantize value, but I've just got it on one beat at the moment. And you can set a manual loop that way as well. Underneath is sensor mode, which will temporarily reverse the song while it's playing and then jump back to its position. Shift and sensor will just play the track in reverse. Slip mode adapts on that so you can then do anything to the song, like hit a hot cue. And it'll jump to that point, let go, and it will go back to the original position. You could do a backspin and let go, and it will still carry on playing from its original position. This is a really nice little feature to have on there to do little scratches and play. It's also possible to edit the grid of a song using the beat grid options down here on the actual unit. If we hold edit grid, you can then use either the jog wheel to move the grid forwards or backwards. If it's not quite positioned right, you can knock it a whole beat forwards or backwards if the number one isn't quite right. And you can use the shift to half and two times. This can all be done on the screen as well. You can also reset it and do all of this on the screen itself. Press done. Underneath each jog wheel are eight performance pads. These are rubber, very tactile performance pads. They're pretty touch sensitive, so if you were to do any sort of finger drumming, it responds really well. But let's go through the different modes available. The performance modes we've got are hot cue, loop, roll, and slicer. And then underneath loop and slicer are two other layers. So we can press loop twice, and we get to auto loop, or press slicer twice, and it will go to slicer loop. Hot cues are really useful for setting throughout the track to jump to different points. They're all color coded, and you can change the color of these within the Engine Prime software. These respond to quantize, so if we turn quantize off, you can hit them in that way, and you can change the quantize value within the settings. To delete hot cues, you can hold shift and delete them. Loop mode, you can jump to a pre-programmed loop that you've already saved, and you can have up to eight different loops saved. It toggles on and off, so when you turn it, press it again, it turns off and carries on playing through the song. I could set up another loop here, save it just by tapping the pad and undo it. And then you've got up to eight different loops throughout the song as well as eight different hot cues. If you don't like using this to select your loops, then you can press loop again to access auto loops. And we can have here 32 beats, 16 beats, eight, four, two, one, half, quarter. And you can go down with the parameters here as well. If you th want more tactile buttons, that's quite nice to create build-ups than having to click this. Because you might accidentally jump two parameters or three parameters at once. Next, we have roll. In here, 
you can roll two beats, one beat, three quarters, half, a third, a quarter, and then tighter, tighter. This is really good for just some tactile performance features that you can just juggle the drums around while you're performing live. Next, we've got slicer mode. What this does is it plays along the song, but it actually maps out each beat, each of the pads, and you can see the tracks playing along here. This is a popular feature on most controllers that use software on a laptop, but this is also on this standalone unit as well. You can hold a pad to loop that section. Out of those eight beats, you can change the loop length with the parameter. You can do it with quantize on or off. And it's quite a nice feature to have. Press slicer again and it will loop that section and do the same thing. So it won't, it'll stay looping those eight beats. Again, a nice feature to see on a standalone unit. I would like to see in the performance modes, maybe even in a firmware update, other things added. So we've got a secondary layer in Hot Cue that doesn't do anything at the moment, and a secondary layer in Roll that could be utilized um, as a second performance feature. Something like using the key shift features, mapping it out to be able to key shift on the pads would be great for doing things like tone play transitions. That's something that would be really nice to see added, but at the end of the day, we've got all of the main features that we're going to use to start with on something like this, a standalone unit, it's great to see. Now let's look up at the effects section that we have on the Denim Prime 4. We've got FX1 and FX2. Now these can be assigned independently to any channel that you choose. You can only have one active at any one time. You can put them both on um, and layer two different effects together. But you could layer the sweep effects and the effects together if you choose using this and this. Now there are a lot of options within the effects. They are laid out very similar to other controllers that are on the market, so it's very much a controller style effects rack. First, this knob, we can change the different effects. Now there are quite a lot built in. We've got, at the moment, echo, delay, hall echo, ping pong, auto gate, flanger, filter LFO, phaser, bit crush, roll, reverse roll, beat break, scratch, reverb, and then we're back to echo. So there are plenty of effects to choose from. Underneath, we can turn the effect on and off to arm it. Then we have a few more options as well as, which I'll come to in the middle, as well as the beat fraction and level. So we can change how often the effects applied with these two buttons here. Let's choose a half beat. And then we can turn the level of the effect up using this here. The echo, for example, does work post fader and post crossfader. You can go even higher with the level. You can change the beat fraction while it's on. And then unlike a lot of other units, you can actually change the feedback and the frequency of each of the effects. These parameters sometimes change depending on the effects because we've got FX parameter and FX frequency. The feedback on the echo, you can change here. Gets way more intense. The button underneath that says parameter will do an echo out, which is a really nice touch to have. Just one press and we've got an echo out. And then the FX frequency changes whether we're applying the echo to the lower frequencies or the higher frequencies. You scroll down and it's shows it in kilohertz, so at the moment it's 40.3 kilohertz. Then we can go up into the thousands, just apply it, so you can really shape these effects to how you like them to sound. Press reset and it will put it back to all frequency bands. I 
I won't go through every single effect. Some do sound better than others. There are a few um, that I prefer over others. I think one little update, I think the reverb, which is a popular effect, could be updated. It could sound a bit cleaner. And that's just a very small update that I'd quite like to see. Change the delay, the decay, sorry. And the frequency that it's applied to. But I think that's one that can be cleaned up, definitely in a firmware update. I'd also, I'm surprised that they haven't added a click knob here, like we've got with the browse part. It clicks every time you move on to the next um, option. Whereas this, it's just a smooth knob that rotates. So you've got to really watch the display to make sure you're on the effect that you want to be on. Um, it would be nice to have had a click so you know when you've changed the effect and it's a bit more tactile. However, saying that, I'm guessing they haven't done this because this leaves room to then add way more effects to this bank. You're not just limited to what's built into the unit. They could potentially develop more effects in the future and add them very easily because there is no limit to how much you can turn this knob. So that is one way to think about it. The very useful effects, I'd say the beat break is quite unique. That's quite a nice one. I'll show you that quickly and turn that on. And it creates a pattern that you can then change in this effects parameter. And it's kind of like a gate effect. It silences and chops out bits of that pattern. And duplicates certain bits. You can change the frequency it's applied to. That's quite a unique effect. And the scratch effect, people will be interested to hear what that sounds like. It's kind of like a scratch break. So it's just like a scratch backwards and forwards. And there we have the effects banks. Both effects banks are the same, so I would say you'd have effects one set up on channels one and three, and effects two on two and four, but you're not limited to that. Lastly, along the top of the unit, we have the mic controls. So as you can see, I'm plugged into mic one here. We've got the on and off switch, a level, and then you've even got a three band EQ plus an echo, which you can turn on and off and then bring the level up here yeah, as you, yeah, as you yeah, hear yeah, on yeah, your voice, 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 if you decide to use an echo on your mic channels as well. There's a talk over option. So when music is playing, it will dip the volume of the music and you can change how aggressive this is in the settings as well, which is really nice for any mobile DJs or even any radio DJs that are doing live streams and want to interact with their audience. You don't have to keep bringing the volume down. It works really well, and there you can hear. On the other side, we have the master level here, which is a little bit tucked away behind the screen, but at the end of the day, you're not going to be touching that an awful lot. So once you've got it set, you don't need to worry about it too much. And then this is where we've got the zone input as well as the booth. So we've got the booth um, level as well as a low and high EQ for the booth. But then this feature that everyone's shouting about, the zone channel assign, if we turn this on, it will ask um, whether we want to stop the playback of deck four and replace it with the zone out. So if we press continue, we can then select a crate or um, a playlist and we can send it to the zone. So say this, for example, I've got temporary mix here, send to zone, and it will play through that mix on channel four. If I press play now, it's just starting to play that track and it will play through that. Um, and you can send that out via the level here to a separate output. You can change the low and high frequencies of that as well, but this is great for any mobile DJs that need to provide music in a separate room or to some separate speakers while DJing them in dance floor. That's a really nice, neat feature, and it's so simple to use. When you're finished, undo it, stop the playback, and then you can just load tracks back into deck four if you decide to use four decks again.
Now we've talked about all the physical features on this unit, I want to just dive deeper into the settings that are available because this is one of the things that impressed me the most is just how much adaptability there is within the settings for all the different things like effects and EQs and um, the way that this unit responds. So by holding the view button here, we can go into the menu options. I'm going to put the screen down so you can hopefully see it even clearer. And then we're going to go into the utility and preferences. It's worth noting we have the source option here as well as record for recording your sets. Very easy to use. Now, first, if I dive into the utility, we can look in this section, we can turn on or off three or four decks. So if you only want to use two decks and just have two decks on the screen to give you more room for your library in those two decks, you can turn that off here. You can change the screen brightness. Mic talk over level, so as mentioned just previously, you can change um, what decibel the talk over kicks in. You can change it from normal to fast, the talk over resume, so when you finish talking, whether the track just kicks in really fast or whether it comes up to volume a bit slower. You've got the attenuation of mic one and two. You can send the mic to the booth and turn that on and off really easily. Send the main mix to the zone out, so you can have separate speakers plugged into zone out and just have the main mix constantly going to that as well using the level. You can turn that off if you don't want that to be um, active. The EQ type, as mentioned earlier, we can go from isolate to normal. So if we've got a track playing, this will just drop the level of each of the EQ bands. Or if we go to isolate, it kills them. So depending on your style of mixing, that's really easy to change. You can even change the EQ high crossover and low crossover at what kilohertz. So if I just turn Sorry, if I just turn the load down now and then change the crossover, you've got a bigger low kill or you can let more of the low frequencies through. Same with the highs. So you can really shape these EQs to your mixing style, the genres of music you like to mix and the preference. The filter resonance, if I put filter on and let's sweep that up a little bit. Can give it lots of resonance or make it much flatter. Again, something that's really nice to have in there. The filter extreme type, now we have kill or bleed. So when it gets right to the top on bleed, you can still, you can see it on here if you can't hear it, but you can still get some of the audio coming through. On kill, it kills it totally out. So you can't hear it anymore at the very low end or very high end. So again, you can change how these effects sound, such as the noise, you can change the sweep, um, the volume. So if it's too loud, you can change that to your preference, and this is all independent of one another. You've got headphone gain, as well as your headphone level here. If you want to boost some lower quality headphones, you might be able to get more output out of it. And cue solo mode, on or off. At the bottom, we've just got some device info and how to check for firmware updates and things like that, and all the versions of the displays. So each of these have their own firmware, the left display, the right display, the mixer, and the controller all have their own different firmwares, and there are different versions that you'll be able to update in the future. Going back up, we can toggle across the preferences here. All of these preferences can be saved to the drive that you have plugged in. So I could change all of these and then save them to my drive tapping that button. And the next time I plug my USB in, I can load these settings so that the unit all changes to my preference. Let's just quickly run through. Track start position, you can choose to start it on the queue position or the very true track start. So if you've got a queue set, it will start there. Default speed range, plus or minus 8%. You can go down to 4% and up to 50 as a default. Sync mode, you've got bar, beat or tempo. Sync button action, you can either use shift and sync to turn it off or just have it as a toggle button. So when you turn it on and off, it toggles the sync on and off. Pitch control type. So this is the two buttons here that I mentioned earlier. When it's on pitch bend, if we hold the song, it will speed it up or slow it down. And then we use shift to change the range. But if you don't use pitch bend like I wouldn't, I can just change this to range. So now when I go off, I can just use these to toggle through the different percentages rather than having to hold shift. Again, another nice feature and another nice setting to be able to change. Back in the preferences, we've got cue and loop quantization. It's on one beat at the moment, but you can change that down to a half, quarter, eighth, or even four beats. 
The paused hot cue behavior. Now this is really nice to be able to change on this unit as well. At the moment when we hit a hot cue, it will trigger the song and play automatically. But if we want to use it, stop it there. If we want to use it as a momentary trigger, we can hold it. And then if we want the track to play, we'd have to press play to let it continue. So that's nice to have that option or within the settings as well. Default loop size, when you turn it on, you can choose 4, 8, 16, or even one or two. The smart loops on or off, move cue to loop in. This is nice to have um, a setting to be able to turn this on and off. Something that's annoying on other players is if you set a manual in and out to set a loop, it will set a cue point on that in point. So if you want to go back to the start of the song, it actually goes back to the start of the in of the loop. So it's nice to not have to, um, it's nice to be able to have that setting to turn on and off. Display, we can display the metadata or the file name. Time format, static or dynamic. Track end warning, you can choose how long before the track finishes, before it starts flashing and warning you. On air mode, on or off. In the safety settings, we've got lock playing deck. So you can't physically load a track until you've queued it up or paused the track, which is nice for accidental loads to the wrong deck. Needle lock on and off, padlock on and off. There's just so many um, settings that you can take control of. In the library settings, we can change the key notation from sharps to flats to open key to Camelot. Most DJs will be using Camelot, but it's also nice to have those other options there. The key filter, so if we're trying to match tracks um, in the filter options, you can either have it show up the key exactly the same as the track that's playing or ones that are compatible. So it'll look at like the major and minor equivalent um, and the other keys that will mix in key and that should be compatible with the one that's playing. BPM range, you can also choose um, the different ranges of BPM. I've got mine set on 78 to 155, which should cover most genres. BPM filter tolerance, so when you're f um, matching tracks, you can choose tracks that will be within a 3% BPM range and then exactly match the key or be compatible. And then at the bottom, we've got the deck colors. As mentioned right at the start, you can customize these and it will change. If we go deck one, for example, watch, it will change the color to your preference. And it changes both the jog wheel, the number button and the cue button here, all to that setting. They're really powerful to have all of these effects in the util sorry, all of these settings in the utility and the preferences. And it's really nice to see um, the way that you can adapt this unit to your preference. So there you have it, a much more in-depth look at the Denon DJ Prime 4. Now, first of all, I must say that this is a powerhouse when it comes to any DJs that want to take their equipment to mobile gigs or events um, where you're taking your equipment and need all the inputs and outputs available to really adapt your setup to different scenarios. This really does tick all those boxes. That zone output is a really nice touch and something that's well thought out um, and that it's a really welcome thing that's added to this unit. I know a lot of mobile DJs are going to make use of that feature alone. As far as the touchscreen goes, this is a really welcome thing that I'm so happy to see on this product. I think there is a lot of room for this kind of technology to be added to DJ equipment from now into the future. And I think Den and DJ have really set a standard with adding this huge 10 inch touchscreen display with those multi gestures. You feel so natural on it just because it's just like using an iPhone or a, an iPad or your smartphone. It's so simple and intuitive to use. And it's just so nice to have that big screen there without the need of a laptop. I will say one of the biggest things that I had to keep reminding myself, because obviously we play on a lot of controllers here at Crossfader and I'm constantly using um, controllers. And I, I have to keep reminding myself that there isn't a laptop plugged into this. It is all working internally straight from a USB and you can do all of this performance with all the features and, and literally all from just having a USB plugged in. And I had to keep reminding myself that when I'm playing on it because I'm using it as if I'm using a controller that needs some external software on a laptop plugged into it. So that's really the biggest standout feature for me. And again, four channels, four channels available as a standalone unit. It's not been done to this standard before anyway. Um, and it's definitely set a precedent for future equipment in the DJ industry. I'm so happy that Denon decided to go this way with this product. Um, build quality, it is solid, it is heavy. Um, it's built well, there's a nice metal faceplate on the player sections. 
Um, people are sort of asking about this screen, does it feel flimsy in any way? No, not really, it's a good solid thick screen. I think you obviously have to be careful with it, like you would be careful with an iPad anyway. Um, with it sticking off the back, hopefully the flight case would sort out any issue of any pressure being put on that and causing any damage. There is a case that comes in the box that slides over the screen to stop any damage to the actual display itself when you're transporting it, so that's a nice touch there as well and well thought out. Den and DJ really did have to do something out of this world to sort of make that stamp in the industry. They've got the SC5000 Primes, they've got the SC5000 M's, and now this, they're really building that ecosystem up and it's really exciting to see where they're going and again, competing against some of the leaders in the industry, pushing the boundaries of the DJ industry forward. This really is a statement piece that is pushing the industry forward and it's great to see. It comes in at, I'm just looking here, £1,469 in the UK. It's still on pre-order at the moment, so you can buy it from most shops on pre-order. You'll just be waiting for delivery. Um, I haven't got any news on the delivery production date of it yet. I'm hoping it's soon. But for that price, £1,469, it comes in under some of its competitors and you get way more features with it. So in all fairness, you're getting a lot for your money. Where it stands in the industry, um, I think it's going to be a very popular product. I would recommend it if you are a mobile DJ or even a performance DJ that wants those extra performance features but doesn't want to have a laptop plugged in. This is the beauty of it. It's just a USB drive or you can internally store your music inside it and you've basically got an all-in-one computer DJ unit that you don't have to plug anything into. You just turn it on and off you go. What would I like to see in the future from Den and DJ? Well, a Prime 2 would be amazing. A more affordable, still two-channel version of this unit would be so great to see. Something that the more entry-level DJs can kind of get on board with. I hope that's in the pipeline. That would just complete that ecosystem way more. And I think it will help some of those beginner DJs get into the Den and DJ products as well. It is still a premium product because of its price range, but you are getting a lot for your money, so you've just got to weigh up the pros and cons of that, of whether you're going to invest in something this expensive right from the start or not. Yes, it's amazing for beginner DJs, you've got everything you would ever need there to get started and more and to go out and play professional gigs with. So yes, I'd recommend it to beginner DJs. I know there's a lot going on, don't get over phased by all of the buttons and features when you're first starting out. It is a really powerful piece of equipment, Hopefully this review has given you some more insight and some more details around how to use this product if you've just got your hands on it sometime in the future and you're learning how to use it. I hope this has given you some value. Thank you so much for watching. Please, if you've got any comments or questions, drop them below. I know Denon will be watching the comments very eagerly to see what people think of this product pre-release. Um, if there are any features that you think could be added in firmware updates, drop them in the comments below. This is how the industry can grow, is from the community, reaching out and commenting on videos like this so that the hardware and software manufacturers can see what's going on and what the people in the market want. Thanks again for watching. Remember to subscribe and hit that bell notification to get notified of more videos like this as they get uploaded. I'll see you in another review video very soon.